Hey guys, Bobby here, and today I want to talk to you about seven ways to grow your brand with Instagram. Now the great thing is that a brand can really be anything. We're a video and photo team, so most of what we do is post pictures from professional shoots that we've done, but it doesn't have to be that. And though Instagram is a photo heavy platform with some video mixed in, you don't have to be an amazing photographer to capture an audience and gain a following. Now I realize that our Instagram doesn't have a ton of followers at the time that we're filming this, and that's because we actually just started it a day ago. However, we do have our company Instagram, which has a pretty good following, and most importantly, it's filled with followers who engage in our content and follow it day in and day out. Now I'm gonna break these seven steps down into one word categories. And of course there's a lot more to it than that, and I'm gonna explain every single one, but this will make it easy to remember and to follow through on with your Instagram account. Now the first step is content. You wanna make sure that your content is relevant to your subject matter. Now of course, not every single photo has to fall in line with this, but you want a viewer to easily come to your feed and know what you're all about without having to dig too much. Now there are some exceptions to this. For example, we're a husband and wife photo and video team, and while we want to mostly be portraying our professional shoots and what we do, we also want to give our followers a look into our lives because we're very branded as a personable couple that want to not only create awesome content for our clients, but get to know our clients. This has been a key factor in our success in bringing in clients and couples who we're super excited to work with. The next step is your format. Now, kind of touching on what I said before, you want to make sure that your feed looks solid. It looks cohesive. You want somebody to come in see a beautiful feed and also know what you're all about. And part of that is not just the content, but also the way you format it. Now, as you'll notice, when I open our feed from our company's Instagram, everything is formatted similarly. Not every single photo is exactly the same. We certainly have some landscape and portrait photos, but they're all the exact same dimensions. And we always go with that white border around our photos. So consistency is important in your format. If you change your format from photo to photo, your feed can start to look messy and lose its direction. Now specific to our format, like I said, we like to have the white border on either side of the photo. That's important to what we do and there's multiple ways to do this, which I wanna show you. You can now do it through Instagram, which wasn't always the case. You can do it with the Instagram layout app but the downside that I've found to that is that while you do go into your specific photo, it will show it with the white borders. If you go into your overall feed, it wouldn't do that for me. It would show it cropped in in a square format, which I didn't like. So what I use is something called Square Ready. Now there's plenty of apps that do this, but I'm just gonna give you a brief tutorial on it. You bring it into Square Ready, you click up here, you go to Albums, pick the photo that you want, We'll take this one, hit this button right here. It automatically centers it and includes the entire frame of the photo. And then you export and upload to Instagram. Incredibly simple. and I think it has a great impact on the overall appearance of your feed. The next step to success through Instagram is perhaps one of the most important, and that's hashtags. Now you should all know what hashtags are, but Instagram allows certain rules with hashtags that work well in building your brand and your following. Now you can put 30 hashtags on a photo and I'm going to recommend a few ways to do it as well as a few ways to garner the best hashtags. You want your hashtags to be relevant to your topic. If you're posting a film photo, for example, there are plenty of hashtags related to specifically film photography. Now that's not to say that they all have to be related to that. In fact, there is an argument to be made for hashtagging all of your photos in specific areas where you wanna get found, even if it's a little different than what the photo is. For example, we shoot a lot of destination weddings. And while not every photo we post is of a destination wedding, it's great to include the hashtag destination wedding photographer, as we do have plenty of content that supports that hashtag. Now the great thing with some recent Instagram updates is how you can find your hashtags. And this is very powerful. If you go to the search bar, and I'm going to use film photography again as my example, I'm going to search film photography, and then I'm going to go to the hashtag tab. And in that tab, you see plenty of hashtags related to film photography. 
It also ranks them in how many posts so you know which are the popular hashtags. Now this page alone is great and can be incredibly helpful for you to look up the popularity of hashtags that you already have in mind. But you can go one step further than this and find hashtags that are even more relevant to what you want. If I click on film photography, I can see up top related hashtags. 35mm, that has 4 million posts. Or 35mm film has 420,000 posts. I shoot film is over a million posts. It's a great way to find other popular hashtags that are related to your original search. The last suggestion I have specific to hashtag content is to always have a brand hashtag. For example, for the cinematic blog, we hashtag the cinematic blog. For our company, we hashtag our company name. And I would recommend having a recurring hashtag so that you can easily find all of your content in one place and so can your followers. Now when it comes to posting your hashtag, you don't want it to look cluttered and this kind of goes back to the content and format, but there's a great way to accomplish this while including all of your hashtags and making it look nice and that's to include five periods. Now the best way to do this that I've found is to go into your notes and I have one up here and you can see that I've included five periods on separate lines and then I begin the hashtags. What I will do is I'll just highlight this, I'll hit select, and I already had my hashtags written out, which is a great step if you have recurring themes. This is my one for film, specifically film photography, and I would just copy this entire thing. But this is also great if you're trying a new topic and you don't have the exact hashtags lined up yet. You can hit select and it will select down to the first hashtag, copy it, and then you'll come into Instagram and on the photo that you just posted, you'll go to the comment and you'll just paste that and start typing in your hashtags. Again, you could paste the entire list of hashtags if you had up to 30 hashtags already written in your notes. So then when your photo is just posted, you'll see that it shows up as three dots instead of a cluster of a bunch of different hashtags that looks messy. The last suggestion that I have with hashtags is that there are some banned hashtags. So make sure that you aren't putting those in or it may not show up for any of the hashtags that you put in. Also, when your content shows up in that hashtag search is based off of when you posted the photo and not the hashtags. So you wanna make sure that you post your hashtags shortly after posting the photo so as to get the most amount of views possible. The next step in Instagram success is to collaborate with your peers. Now, the great thing about Instagram is that while it is a digital platform and it's certainly a social media network, it's not all digital. It's really built a great community and following around the platform. So I'd encourage you to go out to things like Instameets and specific events to collaborate through Instagram and meet other people. It's a great way to get a following of people with a similar topic or something in common. Now these meets range in how they connect you. Sometimes it's through your area or your content or topic, but I'd highly recommend going to them and trying that out. The next step in Instagram success is to get featured. Now this may seem like an ominous, unachievable goal, but it really is not too difficult. Basically what you wanna look for is accounts that I would call feature accounts. And what they're looking to do is bring in content from many different creators around the world that revolve around one topic. So there are feature accounts for tons of things. There are feature accounts by city. There are feature accounts by topic. And the feature accounts can get even more specific. You can have feature accounts within the realm of photography but they're looking for nature photography or travel photography or a variety of different things. And they're a great way to get tons of eyes on your work. What you'll be looking for is an account that says tag and or hashtag for a chance to be featured. And while it's ideal to be featured on some of the largest feature accounts, it's also worthwhile to hashtag and tag smaller feature accounts that are more specific to your topic as you can grow a more specific following that will engage better on your Instagram account. If you choose to try this out, what you'll usually do is just post a photo. You can tag the account in the photo and also use their hashtag. 
Although be sure to check out the account's restrictions as well as their instructions on how to properly have a chance to be featured. All right, we're almost at the end here. And the next topic that I wanna talk about is your consistency. Now this goes in a couple different ways. You wanna be consistent with your content quality and make sure that you're pushing out things that are relevant and high quality. But also you wanna be consistent with your posting schedule. It's certainly a fine line to walk. You don't wanna to post too infrequently where you're losing out on potential followers and community, but you also don't wanna to post too frequently where you're turning people away from your brand. What I found best is to post two or three times a day. That way, if you post something in the morning, afternoon, and evening, or two of the three, you're hitting two different communities that likely check their Instagram and hashtags and whatnot at different times. You're also engaging with people who follow you at different times and keeping relevant and up to date on their feeds. Last but not least, I wanna to talk to you about another important step to Instagram success, and that's to engage. Instagram, while again, a digital platform, is very much a community both digitally and in the real world. And it helps immensely for your brand to engage with others, either related to your brand or a little outside of it. You don't have to only like, comment, and follow people who are doing the exact same thing as you. In fact, I encourage you not to, as it can help expand and grow what you're doing. You can learn tons of great things from people outside of your specific industry that can still apply to your industry. Now, of course, what I mean by to engage is to like and comment and follow people. Don't do so just for the sake of engaging. You wanna actually find content that you enjoy and let them know that you enjoy it by liking or commenting. It's a great way to get them and their followers to see your name and perhaps click through to your profile and see some of your work, which may also interest them. So those are my seven steps to growing your brand through Instagram. If you have any questions, please leave them below. I hope that it helps you grow regardless of the industry and the brand that you're in. And if you like this video, I'd love for you to subscribe below to follow our daily lives, review videos, and business tips for your brand.